Hello. In this video, we will understand LDAP, which is Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Well, you see that uh, this is uh, one more enumeration technique uh, uh, in this in the series of enumeration. Well, there are slight chances that you will get uh, some information from LDAP because uh, this is not like a general protocol which you are getting from normal uh, operating system because uh, this protocol, basically this LDAP, uh, it is not for regular operating system. It is managed by servers only. So if you are attacking some servers, then you can find useful information uh, from LDAP. Otherwise, it is not possible. So it is a, a kind of optional enumeration technique if you are like uh, hacking or accessing something related to servers then you will find a lot of info a plethora of information from ldap it is the best if you can you know if you can enumerate uh, this protocol well from the name itself you can understand that uh, it is related to accessing something called as a directory services right well first thing uh, it, it is an application layer protocol so you can understand that uh, what you see that when you are working with osi and we have seven layers but the protocol related to these layers uh, like to six layers if i have presentation as the last layer if i if i can just uh, make a scenario here then whatsoever protocol you are finding in physical data network transport session and presentation the information from these protocol you are gathering or you are manipulating or enumerating they you will find small scale information right you, you cannot gather a lot of information from there However, the protocol related to application layer, you can find a lot of information from there. So if I if I am enumerating DNS, then you can find a lot many things. I mean, a lot of information you can gather from there. If you in the same way, if you are enumerating NetBIOS, then you can gather a lot of. I mean, if you are accessing LDAP, then uh, uh, LDAP, then again you are getting a lot of information from there. So whenever you are enum enumerating application layer protocol. I'm 100% sure that you will find a lot many information about your target, which is good, right? <clears throat> so, uh, another thing is uh, LDAP is, uh, is for accessing and managing or uh, maintaining the directory service over the network, I mean IP network. Well, these directory servers uh, are where uh, basically the internet or internet applications uh, can share the information about maybe users or maybe groups or maybe network services throughout the network so if i if a company is having their personal internet intranet then uh, it is not uh, like very good to have information at uh, some specific i mean to every individual you can i mean put all these information or all these data into one place and we call it as directory service and from there you can access now like it's a kind of centralized system and you are requesting something something to that centralized system and centralized system is uh, responding you back and this entire system is nothing but a kind of directory service so uh, if you have seen this in earlier times uh, so uh, earlier times has uh, you know in telephone companies mostly suppose you having a telephone company they these telephone companies so let's say i uh, from my country i have a bsnl as a biggest uh, telecommunication uh, company uh, so if i have a bsnl uh, th this is basically a telephone company uh so if i have a tele telephone company yeah, i'm talking about earlier days i mean maybe like uh, uh, maybe like 90s all right so i'm talking about specifically for 90s so this bsnl company what uh, they do in earlier times they create something called as phone book okay they have their phone books uh, like this and uh, this phone book has the information about uh, about a registered user phone number so it has uh, the information about a registered phone number so if you are finding some shop maybe uh, something like xyz so it is the name and then uh, subsequent phone numbers has been given so 028 i'm sorry 5 and the phone numbers like this so this information has been provided over here in this phone book this is a bsnl phone book and it has been distributed to the uh, to the retailers or to the individuals or 
to the publishing department and then uh, you know people like me will purchase this phone book and then they can easily find the registered phone numbers they do not need to go to the bsn company and uh, i mean asking them to give me the phone number it is it is there in the phone book itself right so this is one of the thing uh, which this the, the same thing now apply to the ldap so ldap use the same thing so this phone book is nothing but a kind of directory service in terms of ldap now right so this is like a directory service uh, and this directory service has the information about uh, a user, phone number, country, mail and so on, right? So I am specifically talking about LDAP here, <coughs> alright? So this is the same thing happening, alright? The predecessor of LDAP, so earlier uh, in 90s, uh, we have another technology which is handling the same thing i mean the directory service it is known as x.500 specification so earlier days has this x.500 protocol or specification uh, which uses same thing directory service and now uh, it has been modified to something called as ldap which is lightweight directory access protocol earlier it was just dap directory access protocol right so i hope you you're getting something uh, from here now <coughs> Another thing that uh, I want to clear it out here that uh, let's say that there is a client here. This is our this is our client. So what will happen? And uh, this client needs to uh, get something from this server. All right. So I hope uh, my this is my server. So this is basically LDAP server. All right. So this is the server. So I hope you can understand that this protocol needs a server, right? So it is very important when you are implementing LDAP, you need a server where you can create your directory servers, okay? I mean directory service you can provide there. So this is basically, it is also known as a directory system agent. It is directory uh, system agent, right? So this is known as a DSA which is nothing but a kind of, um, I mean, it is LDAP server only. So now what will happen basically? So a client is going to create a session between, uh, I mean, a session is being generated between client and server. Uh, so this is going to be known as LDAP session. And this session is, uh, is has a, is being used TCP. If it is using TCP, then uh, uh, 389 has been used. And also if it is using UDP, then also you're gonna use 389. However, there is a recent version LDAP2 or LDAPS. If you are using LD, by the way, here note, if you are using uh, LDAPS, then uh, this is not going to be like TCP or UDP. The connection is going to be SSL. So it, it's a, a complete transport layer security or SSL is being provided between client and server. So this is a uh, LDAPS, which is which is shortly if I say it is SSL, nothing else. Okay, so LDAP is been uh, configured or implemented on on the SSL, and it uses a, pro, uh, a port number of 636. So instead of 389, you're having a port number of 636. So if you can find 636, then uh, understand that LDAP has been implemented on SSL. I hope uh, it is quite easy to understand now. Another another thing is a client is going to uh, is to call this LDAP server uh, after LDAP session has been generated and it is known as operation request. Any request a uh, client is sending to LDAP server is known as L uh, operation request and subsequent response is going to be come from the LDAP server whatsoever request has been generated by, generated by the client. So this is known as operation uh, response. I hope you are getting it. All right. Now, both things, both these operation request and operation response are, are has, uh, basically it has, I'm so sorry for my error. It has uh, encoding rules. Uh, so it follows BER, uh, which is known as basic encoding rule, right? So UTF-8 or maybe uh, 16 they are using. So basic uh, encoding uh, rules they are using. I hope uh, this is clear to all. So these are the things that happen between client and server. This is basically a client and server architecture. It uses the same thing. Uh, so a client has been communicating with LDAP server with these criteria. I hope this is 
easy to understand. Another thing that we will understand in LDAP itself is something called as a directory structure. So, this is quite interesting here because uh, you will see. So, this is a directory structure and see that uh, LDAP uses something called as a tree structure. So, remember the first point of LDAP uh, that LDAP uses something called as a tree structure. So, so, you know that tree follows something called as hierarchy. I hope this is, it's easy to understand, right? So, it follows hierarchy. Uh, so, I'll write here follows. So, it follows hierarchy and if it is using, uh, is using hierarchy, then it is known as directory information tree. It has a term there. It is known as directory information information tree all right so ldap is there it follows tree structure has a tree structure and it follow it so tree has a hierarchy and then this hierarchy is known as directory information directory information tree which is known as dit uh, all right now uh, so whatsoever entries are there in this directory uh, structure uh, we call these entries uh, i mean we call it as object so all entries So, by means of entries uh, in the tree, so if this is uh, one entry, then this is another entry and this is another entry likewise, all right. So, all entries are collect cumulatively called as objects. So, if me is there in the tree, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to be called as object, all right. So, so, if it follows a tree structure, then the complete path from the top to the bottom is known as distinguished name. Remember, this name is very important. It is going to be there. It is there in whenever you are enumerating LDAP, you will find this name D N C N O U. You will find that. If you can find, if you are, if your enumerating result is giving you such name, then understand this term right now because it is very important. So, complete path complete uh, i'm so sorry for my slow writing complete path from uh, apologies for that i'm uh, really sorry from top to bottom is uh, known as dn uh, which is known as a distinguished name but to understand this uh, i need to go slow so that you can um, sorry it is a distinguished name but it's okay i mean it's distinguished name only so now how you can how you can i'm so sorry how we can understand it's e so if i have one node being connected to another node and being connected to maybe this one maybe this one yeah i have i have something like this and uh, this is a tree right i mean it looks like but so the whole thing from top to bottom so, this top to bottom is known as DIT as I told you here, uh, it's a, it follows a directory information tree. So, the whole thing is a directory information tree and then this single node, this single node uh, has a name known as RDN, it is called as a relative distinguish, a distinguished name. Right, so, so what do you mean by relative distinguished name? It means that if a node has children, then it is called as RDN, relative distinguished name. And uh, uh, if you want to know that what is distinguished name, I mean what is DN, then it is nothing. But if I give a name here that this is A, this is B, and this is C, then what represent this? What represent this DN is something like this. If I if follows a path A slash b slash e then it is known as dn and when i specifically say uh, c then it is known as r d n another example if i give you here then it's something like this apologies for this arrow it's not good but uh, i'll try my best okay so if i have an example like let's say i have a path etc that follows a tree structure etc uh, foo and then my example dot txt then this whole thing is basically known as dn this is distinguished name and uh, my example dot txt is going to be uh, it is rdn all right i hope now it is clear 
So in the same thing, in the in the directory structure, let's understand a few more things, uh, such as uh, we have some. <coughs> so if this is a tree, by the way, ref refer this tree. So here, this a, if you can see, this a is basically is a root, all right. So a is a root. So it's a top level. I mean, it's a root. So uh, there are different types of root available in in directory structure. So some of them, if you uh, if you see, is known as country. Uh, you will you will also find OU. OU is organizational unit, and I'll explain you what this organizational unit looks like. I uh, just give me a second. So another thing you can also have DC. DC is a domain component. There are actually many uh, you know such a, uh, naming conventions will come. You can find this naming convention from internet as well. But uh, so these are some of the roots which contain other objects. So root contain other objects such as a so a contains b then uh, it al as well, it also contains this maybe e or maybe f okay contains uh, i'm sorry this is other object all right so so it's easy to understand right so if i can say like uh, maybe this is c and then it is connected to etc and etc is connected to foo likewise so I hope it's easy to understand that this C is nothing but our root, all right? Uh, so uh, the object which doesn't have any subordinate object, so like this, if uh, if maybe foo doesn't have anything here, doesn't have any object, doesn't contain any subordinate object, then um, there are uh, there are some names for that. So I will give you the name. So if the object does not have any subordinate object subordinate i didn't know about this sparkling effect uh, this i do not know how this change okay i got it then it is known as uh, they have a name like uh, maybe it could be a person or it could be an individual person uh i i'm sorry i think it's uh, it's mistake here uh no worries it has a name and org person uh or maybe a group of person all right so group of persons so if uh, if there is nothing then uh, this foo can be a person or could be in a person or group of person it could be a possibility so if a uh, clear cut tree diagram if i show you then it looks something like this so if there is let's say i have a company xyz i'm sorry i need to change the color uh, let's say i have a company xyz and this company has a different uh, domain maybe it is working on something like business maybe it works on sales maybe it works on marketing and uh, every Every department has, I should write here department and then up from department I need to say that this is business, sales and marketing likewise, but no issue. Business has some person, so maybe this is a person, all right. So this complete restructure can be, can be drawn in LDAP like this. So maybe DC, as I told you, DC is a root component here. You can see here the domain component, it's a root. So I will write DC as my XYZ okay and then it is connected to uh, this these are organizational unit by the way so this is a basically dc this is ou so i will write ou equals to business all right the same way i'm gonna write here ou equals to sales maybe let's say i have two departments only and then um, this ou is having a person so person could be cn so uh, cn is a common name so i'm gonna write this is mark right so after that they, there is nothing there is no subordinate object so you can say this is a person here right i hope this is quite easy to understand now cn is equals to maybe it's smith so this is the way the ldap store everything in their in their directory services and this the format by ldap stores everything is known as having ldif which has a name it is LDAP data interchange format. 
So this is the name LDIF by which the data has been stored in this way. All right. So I hope uh, the LDEP, I mean, this much information is quite clear to you. Um, so you need a server basically to hold all these entries, right? So you need a, so there, there must be a server. So this is basically a server. Sorry, apologies for this <laughs> worst drawing, but this is LDAP server. And uh, this is basically connected. I mean, this whole information has been connected to this LDAP, this manner, in this way. If you want to grab, if you want to call this information, like in a, in a query, then you can, you, can, you can say this in this manner. If you want to uh, request something like this, if you are requesting by a client, so client gonna ask like this, you, OU business and DC is equals to XYZ and uh, maybe if a company has a domain XYZ.com then D, you can also provide .com like this. So query is going to be generated by a client like this and a subsequent response uh, this request is going to be uh, received by your LDAP server. All right, so this is the request. And subsequent response LDAP server gonna give you to the client. This is a response. This is basically a client. In his computer, you will find uh, the complete, uh, you know, information about this specific thing. Okay, so this is LDAP response info. All right. So this information you can find. If you want to enumerate LDAP, then there are various tools available in LDAP. So what are the tools? Let's see. You can call J Explorer. There is a LDAP admin tool. And uh, there is one LDAP account manager. And there are actually so many. This is account manager. And with the help of these tool, you can actually enumerate, uh, you know, your target. So I hope uh, this much information <coughs> finds uh, useful and you will uh, you will use this LDAP in your enumerating phase. So I wish you very good luck for that and thank you so much.